Part 1. Get Pumped 1. The path is all yours. An entrepreneur is someone who finds a way. Sean, Sean Doris, McBride The promise of my first business book, Crush It!, was to teach entrepreneurs how to monetize their passion by using social media to build a strong personal brand to attract customers and advertisers to their websites, as well as transform them into such trusted experts or entertainment figures that brands and outlets would pay them to talk, consult, and attend events. In other words, it was all about building a personal brand around your business strong enough to make you an influencer. And yet, the word influencer doesn't appear once. The multi-billion dollar influencer marketing industry was still so new at the time, the concept hadn't crystallized when the book was published in 2009. Yet today, influencer marketing is poised to eat a real chunk of traditional marketing's lunch. Younger consumers spend increasingly less time on traditional media and more time consuming content online. And I'm going to go off script here. I can't believe I didn't edit this part because I get so frustrated when people think it's younger customers. Your 73-year-old dad is on Facebook a hell of a lot more than he used to be just a decade ago. Everybody is living in this world. This isn't a young kid's game. YouTube's daily viewership is closing in on TV's 1.25 billion hours per day as television viewership falls every year. One in every five minutes spent on mobile is spent on one of Facebook's apps and services. Every minute, 65,900 videos and photos are posted on Instagram. Over 3 billion snaps are created each day on Snapchat, where over 60% of the ads are watched with audio on. Consequently, since 2009, brands have tripled the amount of money spent on social media. And let me jump off here again. It should be 30 times, 100 times. People don't understand how much brands are overpaying for traditional media. Soon they will figure it out as well. And the land grab and the supply and demand of this incredible opportunity in this book will go away. With the explosion in the number of social networks available to anyone who wants to amass an audience, the vast sums of money being redirected toward those networks Influencer marketing has become a legitimate, monetizable strategy for anyone building an online profile, which means pretty much anyone in business. How legitimate? The top grossing YouTubers earned a combined 70 million in 2016. Many fit a certain type. Several are gamer dudes, for example. But Lily Sin is a rapper comedian who features Punjabi culture in her videos. Rosanna Pacino is a baker and Tyler Oakley is an LGBTQ activist. In the past, the top grossing list has also included dancing violinist Lindsey Sterling and makeup artist Michelle Phan. The most popular Instagrammers can even earn seven figures per year from their social media efforts alone. Even with only a thousand followers, an entry-level Instagrammer can earn about $5,000 per year with just two posts a week, and 10,000 followers could net you as much as 20,000 per year. Again, that's with just two posts per week. Imagine the earnings if the Instagrammer posted more frequently. Let's think about that. The median salary for U.S. employees is about $51,000. You can earn that as an office manager, or you can earn the same amount running your own business built around something you love more than anything else in the world. Want to play it safe? You can work as an office manager, go home, and then earn an extra $10,000 a year on Twitch letting people watch you play and comment on your favorite video game because you really are that good at it. Or use YouTube to share insanely cool science experiments. Or post pictures on Instagram of your pet hedgehogs wearing tiny hats. Thanks to the proliferation of the platforms and the migration of TV and magazine viewers to the internet, there is room for many, many more experts and personalities to create a lucrative, sustainable ecosystem that promotes and grows their business or even their side hustles. It's a great time to be a fashion model, for example. There was a time when there was room for only a handful of superstars to see themselves featured in editorial fashion spreads or on the runways. Then there were maybe a thousand in the middle getting steady commercial work in print and TV. The rest found themselves at the bottom scraping by doing catalog and promotion work. But the internet has opened a floodgate of opportunity for anyone willing to hustle to grow a fan base through blogs and video channels to attract the attention of hundreds of thousands of brands eager to spend money supporting popular, good-looking, fashionable people by branded content and advertising. Not only that, 
people blessed with model good looks or even just blessed with angles and filters and being savvy about it don't actually have to model to get paid. The huge shift in attention to social media means that beautiful people are no longer beholden to the magazine and talent agencies or anyone really to make money off their good looks. They can look fabulous every day on their own platforms while engaging with steadily growing audiences and brands will be begging for exposure. Just ask Brittany Xavier. We'll get to her later. We often define an influencer as someone who garners such a big audience on social media that brands offer to pay that person to attend events, take selfies with products, or talk about services. Brands have paid the famous people of the internet billions and billions of dollars to be their endorsers, sponsors, promoters, and product placers. Product placement is a natural fit with the YouTube and Instagram crowd, but it can leave the Motorcycle King bloggers or the Raspberry Jam Queen podcasters those who might not feel photogenic or charismatic enough for constant selfies or videos, feeling as if their options of growing their influence and building revenue streams are limited to selling ad space. I'm here to tell you they are not. You just have to be smart and strategic about how you use your content. I've been paid to write books and speak on national and international stages, and I've earned enough money to make the kind of investments that could pay out four generations. However, I have not made one penny because an energy drink company paid me to say, this is my secret to working 18 hours a day. I'm an entrepreneur who built a $150 million media company in part because of my personal brand, which I developed by first creating valuable content that grew my influence. That's one way to crush it. By all means though, go ahead and make money over time by running ads, for example, by selling ad space to a candy bar company as your star rises. You can get paid $10,000 for placing a candy bar on your table while you work. But for God's sakes, don't stop there. That's where you start. Don't leave money on the table because you don't realize how much bigger you can get. How big? The internet is the entrepreneur's oyster. And you can use its pearly platforms to build a personal brand so powerful that the world is not only willing to pay you for your products or services or to promote other people's products or services, but also it might even be willing to pay you to just be you. To me, that's when you've become a true influencer. At its height, influencer marketing is really reality TV 2.0. I want you to think of yourself as tomorrow's newest star. You, the entrepreneur, you know what, before I actually say that, and I want you to keep that edit in where I started reading and now I'm going off the hook. I'm worried that you're driving right now or you're on the treadmill and you're like, I'm not a star. I don't have that charisma. And so yes, that's a strong statement. I do want you to think that way because I like expanding your mindset and I, and you know, do you think I could have ever dreamed that being a businessman was going to be cool? I'm literally recording this right now during Super Bowl weekend, and I was in a club last night where the most famous people all came up to me asking me for a selfie because I'm living now in the vortex of when entrepreneurship is cool. Maybe being a lawyer and doctor was cool in the 80s. It's not now. Maybe being an entrepreneur is cool now, but I promise you, after a couple of economic downturns, it's not going to be. So tomorrow's star is less about you being like a star and kind of performing. It's more quadrupling down on what you actually love and realizing the world may come to you. Video game kids when I was growing up were nerds. Now they're the biggest stars to teenagers because esports exploded. There are gonna be 40 things that are gonna happen over the next 30 years around what you actually do and it's gonna become cool and you don't even realize it, which is why this is all so important. You, the entrepreneur, are no different from the organic mac and cheese brand that branches out into cheddar cheese crackers and chicken noodle soup. The brand was never about organic mac and cheese. It was about organic comfort food. You're the expectant mom who starts a pregnancy podcast and then writes a book on raising kids suffering from anxiety. You're the home cook with a beautiful Instagram stream who starts a podcast on canning and gets invited to write a column about urban gardening in a national magazine. You're the boy who starts a wine blog that wasn't actually about wine, but about making a name for himself as a person who could show other businesses better ways to communicate and sell. The home cook's Instagram isn't about food, but about building her influence in the healthy lifestyle category. The mom's podcast on pregnancy is just the patty of a parenthood burger. Your personal brand can get you all the fixings you want. Its outsized importance in today's business world means stardom is no longer limited to the most beautiful or telegenic among us. The field is open to many, many more players. It also means that most entrepreneurs still have lots of room to ratchet up their game and become influencers. I'm watching you out there. 
It's shocking to me how many entrepreneurs trap themselves into boxes of their own making, even though they have so much more power than they did before. Let's say you're killing it on Twitter. What are you going to do the day you realize you're tired of Twitter? What are you going to do if Twitter disappears? What if you're the country's favorite beekeeper and you develop a deadly allergy to bees? It's a matter of survival to think beyond your current success and constantly look for ways to create new ones so that you're never limited to any one platform or even one topic. How do you do that? By creating a personal brand so powerful that it transcends platforms, products, and even your passion. Take cultural icon Julie Andrews, the rosy cheek star of multiple Broadway and Hollywood masterpieces like Camelot, The Sound of Music, and Mary Poppins. Her entire career, her entire identity, was built on the soaring soprano voice that made her a household name. She said, I thought my voice was what I am. Then, about 20 years ago, she had surgery to remove precancerous cysts on her vocal cords. When she awoke, the cysts were gone. But so was her voice. But because she was Julie Andrews, that wasn't the end of her career. She has since written dozens of children's books, starred in the blockbuster movie series The Princess Diaries, and most recently, in conjunction with Jim Henson Company, produced and starred in a Netflix series that teaches arts appreciation to preschoolers. Oprah was not just a talk show host. Muhammad Ali was not just a boxer. The Rock is not just a wrestler. A strong personal brand is your ticket to complete personal and professional freedom. I want you to become the Julie Andrews or the Muhammad Ali of your industry. Of course, for this to work, you have to start with phenomenal talent. Unlike these celebrities, though, you won't need an agent to get you noticed by the right people and start making better money. In 2009, a comedian who amassed thousands of followers cracking jokes on Twitter started making real money only when she was signed by CAA and landed a real job writing jokes for David Letterman. Today, however, you don't need to write jokes for other people when the maker of M&M's, the Mars Candy Company, could pay you $10,000 to tweet your own M&M joke. And you don't need to sell your material to a television network to land a lucrative deal. Let's remember that back in 2009, people used their phones as phones. We were still using flip cams to film our videos, and our phones hadn't metamorphosed into our televisions and movie screens. That's all changed. The internet became the ultimate middleman, allowing every industry to go direct to consumer, from music and publishing to taxis and hotels. Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook are the NBC, ABC, and CBS of our day. Your audience is waiting for you. What you need to do is figure out how you're going to become the next empire. And what I mean by that, everybody, is you're going to have to create the big show on these platforms. So I think of myself as I Love Lucy or, you know, what's a good show that I love? Three's Company, right? You're trying to figure out how to make the content for these networks. The good news is you can do that without anybody bothering you or creating or forcing their creative ideas on you. You can just start creating and be on these networks. In 2009, I was trying to get you to understand that you could make some money in the online world or use it to catapult yourself to the mainstream, if that was your end goal. Today, the internet is the mainstream. You are in complete control of how the world sees you, how often, and the context. Social media phenom John the Fat Jewish Ostrovsky had been on the entertainment circuit for years, signing with a record label in college and hosting a celebrity interview show on E! But it wasn't until he amassed half a million followers on Instagram that he was able to parlay his comedy and performance art into a book deal, a wine label, and appearances on reality TV, which led to his gaining 10 million followers on Instagram. Superstar filmmaker Casey Neistat started making online films as far back as 2003, but it was his high-quality short films and creative daily vlog he posted on YouTube that cemented his personal brand in the minds and hearts of 8 million followers. With that audience, he was able to sell his company to CNN for $25 million, launch a new project there that aims to bridge the gigantic divide between his young skewing audience and the mainstream news media, and become the face of Samsung's commercial that aired during the 2017 Oscars. Personal brands are for everyone. Strategically, developing a personal brand through social media works brilliantly for creatives as proven by the high number of photographers, artists, and musicians who've offered to share their stories for this book when I put out the call for submissions. 
However, it can work for anyone in any industry who wants to put in the hustle. You no longer have to toil incognito behind someone else's name or logo until you build enough cred to strike out on your own. Of course you can, and many do, often to build up their knowledge, life experience, and savings accounts before taking the entrepreneurial leap. Several of the people interviewed for this book said that the experience and skills they gained in their former jobs, even the ones they hated, were essential to helping them become the entrepreneurs they are today. Take, for instance, Dan Markham, who co-hosts YouTube's What's Inside channel with his son Lincoln. Dan says, as a sales rep, oddly enough, learning how to convince doctors to use certain drugs taught me how to be a YouTuber. I would practice with other representatives. We'd practice and practice and practice and practice. I'd never been on camera before, but I feel like the camera is just like talking to one of those other drug reps in front of the doctor. And so, my job actually helped me. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to own my own business. But I was working so hard going to college and going to my day job and learning all I could from being a sales rep and then doing all the little things on the side and failing and succeeding. And then finally, it just kind of came together. I'm 37 and I've been working on this since I was 19 years old, trying to develop myself. It took all of those years for it to happen. But now I feel like I'm finally at a place where I wanted to be. It's crazy that this is where it is, but I love it. Isn't it cool to know there's no prescribed route? If you're a project manager who'd rather be a beekeeper, for example, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, you could launch a nature-oriented podcast and blog with perceptive, humorous, creative content and amplify your voice in all kinds of arenas beyond bees. Then you could start producing how-to videos or write a book about starting in the biz, ensuring that your knowledge is passed on to the new generation of beekeepers. You'd be sharing important information and growing your personal brand at the same time. And then you could be asked to host a special on Animal Planet or National Geographic a call and say they want to do a feature. As your personal brand grows, you might develop a recipe for a new honey-flavored candy, lip balm, lozenge, or yogurt. You might create a new bug spray or skin regimen, or design bee-branded tote bags and gardening material. Or you might get a direct message on Instagram from fashion model Carly Kloss, who, it turns out, is super into bee culture. And the tagged selfie you take together not only boosts your book sales from 300 to 30,000, but also sparks the next chapter of your career. That shit is really happening. Use today's social media platforms to develop your brand and expand your influence, and you can build a business that can continue to grow even if you've never touched another hive. That's just a hypothetical example, but you'll hear lots of real ones in what comes next. This book is a celebration of all the people who have put crush it principles to work and have seen massive success in return. I want you to learn from their examples. Some represented here are my friends, Many are just random people who, when given the chance, stepped up to share their stories on how they did it. It was nearly impossible to choose from among the inspiring stories we heard, and I wish I could have featured everyone who reached out to me and my staff. There just wasn't enough room. We heard great stories from entertainers, fitness professionals, fashion bloggers, and of course, marketing consultants. People you might expect to be crushing it on social media. But we also heard from a dentist, a financial planner, a dog trainer, a Lego convention planner, and a quick lube oil change business owner, among scores of others. Many started out young and single, but some already had kids when they decided to double down and crush it. Several gave up lucrative jobs to devote themselves to their passion. What this should tell you is that if you're not crushing it, it's not because you're too old or too poor or have too many other responsibilities. It's because you haven't fully committed to making the leap yet. You're making excuses like, Gary makes it seem so easy, yet it's really almost impossible. It's not, actually. But you can't half-ass this. It will require big risks. It will take all your mental capacity, your time, and your leisure. You're going to eat shit for a long time. But I promise, the sacrifices will be worthwhile. I also promise that once you've developed a robust personal brand, you will be able to enjoy as much or as little leisure as you want. Because you will be entirely in control of your own life. Don't look for a nine-step program to success here, though. I can't give you one. The principles are universal. The path is all yours. I will give you examples of how to use the platforms, as will the people who shared their stories with us. But they're just examples, not commands. You can do it my way, or you can do it your way. 
chart your path in the spirit of crush it, if not by the letter. You just have to make the choice to actually do it. I'm so tired of excuses. Why not try something new? Be optimistic. Exhibit patience. Shut your mouth and execute. The most exciting thing about the business world we live in is that it's still in its infancy. There's so much room to succeed here. Unbelievably, a lot of you still seem to balk at experimenting with new and upcoming platforms. You don't want to waste your time if it turns out to just be another fast-fading trend. But then you wonder why influencers like the ones you're about to meet are succeeding so much better than you are. That disconnect is what gives entrepreneurs like you such an early advantage. Now there is even more opportunity to cash in on your passion than there was back then. Grab your spot, make your mark, and start living in the Crush It universe. How I'm Crushing It. Amy Schmidauer, Savvy Sexy Social. Instagram, at Schmidtastic. Amy Schmidauer, that's me, became an internet sensation because she got picked last to be a bridesmaid. It was 2007, and though she was the last one chosen, she wanted to be the favorite. So she thought about what she could do to make the bride feel special and came up with the idea to make a video with one of the other bridesmaids. She had fun making it and was sure the bride would be appreciative of the gesture. But it wasn't until she played it at the rehearsal dinner that she realized the power of the medium. The bride wasn't the only one crying over the video. The whole room was moved to tears. I got hooked immediately. I loved the idea of telling a story and being able to have an emotional control over an audience. It engages all the senses at once. The video Amy had made for the wedding was burned onto a DVD. She was thrilled, however, to discover the existence of online platforms onto which she could upload videos and share them. She started filming pieces of her life, taught herself how to edit, and displayed the results on YouTube. The process became her creative outlet. In the meantime, while majoring in political science at The Ohio State University, thinking she might want to go to law school, she managed to get a dream job at a law firm where she eventually got involved in lobbying, fundraising, and public policy. But she also became known as the person who knew how to edit videos and could help you figure out your privacy settings on your Facebook page, which would not have been remarkable in Silicon Valley, but was unusual in Ohio at the time. It was friends living on the West Coast who informed her that social media management was a real job. And she thought, I could get paid to do this? That's when the side hustle started. After getting home from her day job, sometimes as late as 7 p.m., she'd buckle down to the freelance work. The first small businesses she approached were already overwhelmed by all the content they had to create for Facebook and Twitter. And now, here's this person telling them they had to make videos too? They didn't want to hear it. Amy realized that the only way she was going to get small companies to take her seriously was to show them why social mattered. She got her first client, a local sustainable food magazine, by sending an email explaining that although she didn't have any formal social media experience, she was sure she could help them develop their brand. Oh and she was willing to do it for free. It didn't take a lot of convincing for them to take her on as their social media manager. She had been working the side job along with her full-time job at the law firm for three or four months when Lewis Howes, also from Ohio, who was by then making a name for himself with LinkedIn, suggested they meet. He didn't find her through the work she was doing for the Sustainable Food magazine. He had noticed the photo and video blogging she was doing on YouTube and other social media sites and wanted to know more about what she was doing. They met over burgers in the spring of 2010, and he gave her two pieces of advice if she wanted to start getting paying clients. One, go to Las Vegas and attend Blog World, the new media conference where the leaders in blogging, podcasting, and video content creation gather to talk about their craft and businesses. Not a problem. The magazine had already helped her purchase a badge. Two, read Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. That was easy too. Amy went to the library and picked up a copy. She read it, and that's when she knew she wasn't going to become a lawyer after all. I would have been happy to do this as a side job forever. I didn't know that I could be powerful enough to make this happen. Crush It made me able to envision what my future could look like. I'd been thinking that I first needed to become a prestigious company to get other businesses to hire me, and I didn't give enough credit to the fact that I was already being watched, asked for advice, trusted, and considered a mini thought leader because of my personal brand that I developed through videos of my life. It made me realize how important personal branding is to growing a business, and I was already doing it without even knowing it. So maybe I was further ahead than I thought. Maybe I could turn this thing I was doing for fun into something else by simply leveraging what I knew really well, how to use video, how to talk to a camera like it's a person, and then craft the messaging for a very specific type of person. It was the only fire I ever really needed to hit the ground running because I knew what to do at that point. 
Now she knew that social media management wasn't going to be her sector of the online world, she was going to go after vlog and personal brand consulting. And she was going to ask for what she was worth. Obviously, the definition of devaluing yourself is working for free, but I also think I would have stayed too low in my pricing because of how much it was devalued as an industry in the beginning. Crush It allowed me to wrap my mind around the fact that my skill was a major, major asset, both in marketing and customer service for businesses. That's what made me a lot more confident in my pricing and monetizing on my terms. And my confidence, believing that I'm worth more, has helped me get paid much more over my career. I just kept taking the chance because I knew I was doing good work. She started her vlog, Savvy Sexy Social, to end the misery that small businesses were going through. By the time she quit her job in the beginning of 2011, she had gotten some paying clients, but the switch from salaried employee to freelancer was still a huge risk. She moved in with her boyfriend, got rid of her car, and did everything she could to keep her overhead low. She was prepared for it to take months to bring in new clients, but all the work she'd done in the wings, getting people to know and trust her by talking about her work, attending Blog World, following up with her network, and being diligent with building relationships paid off. She had paying clients within a few weeks. To make sure she stood firm on her prices, for a while she created a separate virtual assistant email and negotiated for herself under a different persona. While continuing to teach on Savvy Sexy Social, which has over 75,000 subscribers and has received over 5 million views, Amy has written a best-selling book, created a series of online courses on vlogging for business, and started a second successful video marketing business. And she still presents keynotes all over the world. She's newly married. Hello, Mrs. Landino. She has a cute dog and business is thriving. By any measure, she's crushing it. Yet she's reluctant to congratulate herself. I've had a hard time fully appreciating what I've accomplished at any point. I understand that I am in complete control and that's an overwhelming feeling because it means you could always be doing more and it means you might not be doing enough. Amazing things happen, and then there's a day when I wake up and it's a bad day, and it's like, I'm failing. I never got close to quitting, but there were days when I was thinking, are you really cut out for this? I was my own biggest challenge. I didn't take the time to be grateful and give myself the respect that I had come so far. It sounds fluffy, but I had to start sitting down and reflecting on a weekly, daily, monthly basis on what I did well and be happy with that and remember it the next day because it's going to be hard every day. Waking up and knowing the challenges will come, and they do, I still wouldn't change a thing. I know I chose my right path, and I love continuing to follow it no matter what. Amy has a great story, right? I love how she scratched her own itch. I love how she successfully channeled all her energy into creating an incredible brand, and yet despite having accomplished so much, continues to navigate and doesn't let up for one second. She is the embodiment of patience and tenacity as are all the other people we interviewed for this book. I can't wait for you to meet them.